Hello everybody and welcome back to a new series on my channel. This is called Buff Market Watch and as the name suggests we're going to be going on to Buff and using their very nice price checking system to look at some of the trends over the past few days and kind of see what Buff is looking like in terms of ups and downs and talk about how those can, trends can explain the future for those items. I'm going to be making this series periodically whenever there's a big event for Buff specifically because Buff usually has very interesting prices that look a lot different than the Steam Marketplace in a lot of cases and for that reason it's pretty interesting to look into their marketplace. But first let's take a look at a different type of marketplace, Skinport.com. Skinport.com is a great website to use for all of your marketplace needs. Obviously they have very cheap prices across the website and a huge selection of offers that you can go ahead and find. They're a great site to use, they have a great trust factor rating, and they are very gracious to sponsor this video. If you decide to use my link in the description below, thank you very much. So let's take a look at the trends page on Buff. Now the way to get to the trends page, you're going to have to use the mobile app. You can't do it from the desktop site. Hopefully they do allow that in the future at some point, but currently you do have to use the mobile app in order to get there. So make sure you have the mobile app. Starting off, we have Stat Trek Nova Antiques in Factory New Condition, which are up about 30% of the biggest riser for the past 24 hours. Those are actually a pretty interesting one, and the main reason for that is probably because people are doing Op Asimov trade-ups. The reason for that is obviously just because the Op Asimov looks really good, and there's a lot of Chinese people that are interested in the Op Asimov. So the Stat Track Factory New Nova is usually the go-to for that because it's the cheapest one that you can get that will actually result in a field-tested Op Asimov. That's currently going for 144 yuan, so probably either some one person bought out a whole bunch of them, or there's just more interest in the trade-up. Dignitas Foils from Cologne 2016 saw a 23% rise, about a 24% rise actually, and that's not very surprising. I mean, honestly, Dignitas has been gaining a lot of popularity with Chinese buyers, and so seeing that rise is honestly not too unexpected. Obviously, the other Dignitas Hollows from Kato 14 and Cologne 2014 did very, very well, so it's not that insane to see later stickers for Dignitas still seeing pretty similar rises. And for the third place, we have the Lucky Gold from Berlin 2019, which honestly is also not that surprising. It's a really good looking sticker, and it's also very popular with a lot of people that like to do signature crafts. And so this was kind of one of those stickers that's just going to see consistent rises over time. This is just one of those jumps. Now the biggest losers on buff in the past 24 hours were the Souvenir P2000 Amber Fade in fact new condition which was a 14% decline. Now this item is obviously pretty weird because there's going to be some that have scratch souvenir stickers and those can contribute to the price lowering in a rapid sense because people are quick selling these scratched souvenirs. So that's probably why this one declined. Honestly not too shocking of a decline here and something that is expected with a lot of souvenir items. The second place decline is a 12% loss and that's with the Gambit Esports Foil from London 2018. Now this one is honestly not that surprising at all. The Gambit Esports is actually something that has been doing pretty good on buff over the past few weeks or so. Gambit has just gained a lot of popularity and also gained in price quite a lot as well. So seeing this is honestly just a normalization, it's also probably the least popular Gambit sticker out of every single Gambit sticker that exists. So a decline on this is honestly not that surprising. However, Gambit stickers have been doing pretty good and they have been due for a rise for quite a while. They're a pretty good looking sticker overall and will probably see their way onto a few interesting crafts in the future. So overall, I think Gambit's still a good buy. This one maybe not so much just because it isn't that good of a sticker obviously because it's from London and has that London design not a lot of people are into. And our final top three loser is the Titan Clone 2014 non hollow which was a decline of close to 11%. This one is a bit odd for sure obviously the Titan Clone 2014 doesn't have any particular direct reason to decline in price and it is in the top three which is also a little surprising probably just more interest in similar looking stickers like the Cloud9 stickers recently so that's probably why this didn't do so good over the past 24 hours but overall in the long term price trend of this item it's probably not going to be too big of a deal and the titan will probably see some future success it's a really good looking sticker very simple and does have a very recognizable logo with a very long legacy behind it All right, now moving on to the overall week and some of the biggest changes we've seen over the past week in rises and declines. We're going to start off with Cloud9. Now, Cloud9 stickers as a whole were a really big topic for the past week because Cloud9 obviously was ceasing their operations as a CSGO team, which means no more Cloud9 stickers, and that caused a large fury of hype, probably a bigger fury of hype 
in the community than I've seen for other stickers for other teams that have done similar things. Cloud9 just had a huge backing of investors buying into them, and that's why the Cloud9 London 2018 sticker, despite not being really all that good, still rose over 180% over the last week, which was very crazy. The Cloud9 G2A foil from Cologne 2015 was the second best one, going up 124%, and then the MLG Columbus Hollow was 74% gain, so pretty cool there. And speaking of Gambit Esports, that one was also the fourth place with a 64% gain. Again, like I was talking about, Gambit Esports obviously doing very good. And right there, the Gambit Esports foil from London 2018 that we just talked about, that was a 53% gain, so obviously the last 24 hour normalization decline was to be expected on that. In terms of risers, the only other thing of big interest was probably the M4A1S Atomic Alloy, which is not really something you tend to see too much, and that's probably going to be the same sort of idea with that Nova Antique and the M4A1S Atomic Alloy Minimal Wear stat track is obviously just used for trade-ups for the most part, and that's probably why it was being bought out so much, and that's probably why it gained 36%. Overall, trade-ups seem to be getting pretty popular, and with the new release of the Fracture Case and the Broken Fang Case, there are more profitable trade-ups in the game, so take that information how you will in terms of what you're going to invest into for the future. I also wanted to quickly mention that JW stickers also rose quite a bit. This could just be a correction for a long overdue price change, because honestly there hasn't been any big news with JW recently, especially looking through his Twitter, just not really anything of too much interest, so seeing this rise on their sticker price is probably just an overdue correction. Now as for the last week in terms of declines, there were a lot of interesting things. First of all, the top three skins were all from the Shadow Web collection, and they were all used for trade-ups, they were all purples used for pink trade-ups. These ones all declined quite a bit, the biggest loser being the Baroque Orange in Factory New Condition, which was a drop of 26%. I do want to point out that all of these were in Factory New Condition, so obviously ones that are used for trade-ups. Probably just not as much popularity with going to pinks, and there's probably more focus on the pinks themselves in terms of going up to the reds like the Gungnir. The interesting thing about this particular top three is that they're all from the Canals collection, and that actually trades all the way up to the Op Prince, which is a little bit weird, but when you look into the hype trends over the past couple weeks, the Prince was obviously very hyped not too long ago, maybe about a month ago or so, and that obviously could lead to a deflation of price that we're seeing right now, and that could explain the top three, but it is still a little bit weird for the most part. Looking over over the past week, actually a lot of stuff was for Shattered Web Collection items like the Emerald Gurmangunder and the Flame Gurmangunder and the Midnight Lily for example, a lot of really popular investment skins. These ones all kind of declined which could show a lesser interest in Shattered Web going forward as they did see a recent huge jump in price and their future is a little bit uncertain so that could be a reasoning for it. Also of course there is more interest in Broken Fang items because the operation is coming to a close pretty soon here so that could also explain the declines but honestly with how big of a rise those items did see in the recent few weeks, this is not really that surprising. Honestly, I wouldn't really be too worried about the prospect of these in the future. The Shadow Web items have proven to do pretty well despite a fairly large quantity of them in existence, and I think that the trend is just going to continue as they get rarer and rarer over time, so not really anything to worry about here. And that's all I really wanted to talk about for the first episode of this Buff Market Watch. If you guys wanted to see the past month in review, I can also consider adding that on in the future to these episodes, but I do think that a lot changes over a month, and so a lot of those things and a lot of those takes are probably not going to be as accurate for the current up-to-date things, so I think that the past week is the most important thing to review really, and I didn't really consider going into the past month. But if you guys do want to see that in the future videos, then let me know in the comment section below, and I can definitely add that on into the future episodes. Anyway guys, thanks for checking out this series. If you do like it, be sure to leave a like and also a comment telling me what you enjoyed about the series and what I could potentially change for the future. And if you guys want to see more of this, of course, subscribe to the channel. I do make a lot of really great investment content for CSGO, so be sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on that notification bell. And of course, if you want to check out my Skimport, Discord, and Twitter links in the description below, that would also be really, really cool of you. So thanks for watching, guys. See you next time. Peace.